Imagine a country where almost half of the territory is arid desert, where rain is so rare that some regions go months without seeing a single drop fall from the sky. Now imagine that this same country decides to do the impossible, build an artificial river that crosses hundreds of kilometers, transporting billions of liters of water from north to south. Sounds crazy, right? But here's what will surprise you. Israel did exactly that. And we're not talking about a small channel. We're talking about an engineering megastructure that literally changed the fate of an entire nation. A project so audacious that it transformed deserts into green fields, created cities where there was only sand before, and guaranteed the survival of millions of people. Look, when you discover how they did this with 1960s technology, you'll understand why this is one of the greatest engineering feats in modern history. Let's go back to the early 1950s. Israel had just become an independent nation, but faced a problem that threatened its very existence, water. More specifically, the lack of it. Here's the situation. The country had the Sea of Galilee in the north, full of fresh water. But in the south, where the Negev Desert was, there was practically nothing. And here's the problem. Thousands of immigrants were arriving. The population was growing rapidly. New communities needed to be established. But how do you do that without water? The Israeli government realized something crucial. They had water in the wrong place. The Sea of Galilee was in the north, but the arid lands that needed to be developed were in the south. The solution? Move the water. Literally create an artificial river that would carry water from one end of the country to the other. When the idea was first proposed, many thought it impossible. How do you build a system that transports water for more than 130 kilometers through mountains, valleys and deserts? How do you do this without losing too much water to evaporation? How do you keep the water clean throughout this entire journey? The question seemed endless, but Israel had no choice. It was build this system or see the country's development stagnate. And so began the most ambitious project in Israel's history, the National Water Carrier known as the National Water Carrier. Official construction began in 1958. What they planned was absolutely incredible. An integrated system of giant pipelines, open channels, tunnels through mountains, reservoirs, and pumping stations, all working in perfect synchrony to move water from the Sea of Galilee to the Negev Desert. Here's something that will impress you. The system wouldn't just be buried pipes. In some parts, it would be an open channel 45 meters wide. In others, tunnels dug through solid rock. And in specific sections, concrete pipes three meters in diameter. Three meters! You could drive a car inside these pipes. The scale was monumental. We're talking about a project that would need to transport about 400 million cubic meters of water per year. To give you an idea, that's enough to fill more than 160,000 Olympic pools annually. But here's where it gets even more complex. The water would need to be pumped upward. The Sea of Galilee is 212 meters below sea level, but parts of the system needed to be at higher elevations. This meant powerful pumping stations that could lift millions of liters of water against gravity. The engineering required was breathtaking. And the challenges? Look, they were enormous. First, there was the geography. Israel is a small country, but its terrain is incredibly varied. You have the Jordan Valley, then the Galilee Hills, then the coastal plain, and finally the Negev Desert. Each region presented its own obstacles. In the mountains, they needed to drill tunnels through hard rock. On the coastal plain, they dealt with sandy soil that could collapse. In the desert, Extreme heat complicated the work and increased the risk of evaporation. Then there was the question of funding. Israel was a young country, still recovering economically. The estimated cost of the project was staggering for the time, about $150 million. In updated values, that would be over $1 billion. Where would this money come from? The government had to negotiate international loans seek private investments, and convince the population that this economic sacrifice would be worth it. And then there was the human factor. 
Thousands of workers were needed. Engineers, excavators, operators of heavy machinery, technicians. They worked in extreme conditions. In summer, temperatures in the desert could exceed 40 degrees Celsius. In winter, occasional rains transformed construction sites into muddy fields. But they continued. Day after day, month after month, year after year. The technology of the time was also limited. We're talking about the late 1950s and early 1960s. There were no computers to calculate water flows. There were no drones to do topographic surveys. Everything had to be done manually or with basic equipment. Engineers used pure mathematics and physics to calculate angles, pressures and volumes. And believe it or not, they got it right. One of the most impressive aspects of the system was its intelligent design. Engineers realized they could use gravity to their advantage in some sections. After pumping water to higher elevations near the Sea of Galilee, they let gravity do the work in other sections. This saved energy and made the system more efficient. Additionally, they built strategic reservoirs along the route. These reservoirs served multiple purposes. They stored water for emergencies, allowed sediments to settle, and helped regulate the flow. Here's something fascinating. The system was designed to be expandable. Engineers knew that the demand for water would only increase. So from the beginning, they planned the system so that additional pipelines could be connected. New branches could be added. Capacity could be expanded. It was visionary thinking for the time. After five years of intense work, in 1964, the system was ready. The inauguration was a national event. For the first time in history, water from the Sea of Galilee flowed through the entire country. It reached the Negev Desert. It reached regions that were previously considered uninhabitable. It was a moment of celebration, but also of expectation. Would it work as planned? Would it really change the country? The answer came quickly, and it was a resounding yes. The economic impact was immediate and transformative. Look, let's start with agriculture. Before the national water carrier, Israeli agriculture was limited mainly to the north, where there was a little more rain. The south was practically unproductive. But as soon as water began to arrive, everything changed. Farmers began to irrigate lands that were previously deserts. Crops that could never grow there suddenly became viable. Within a few years, the Negev Desert began to flourish, literally. Fields of tomatoes, peppers, citrus fruits emerged where there was only sand and stones before. Israel began not only to feed its own population, but also to export agricultural products. The agricultural sector grew exponentially. Production increased by more than 300% in the first two decades after the system's inauguration. But here's where it gets even more impressive. Water didn't just enable traditional agriculture. It enabled innovation. With limited water resources, even with the national water carrier, Israelis were forced to develop more efficient irrigation techniques. Drip irrigation emerged, a revolutionary technology that delivers water directly to plant roots, minimizing waste. This technology, born of necessity, would eventually be exported around the world. And it wasn't just agriculture. New urban centers emerged. Entire cities were established in regions that were previously considered uninhabitable. Beersheba, in the Negev Desert, grew from a small village to a thriving city with hundreds of thousands of inhabitants. And why? Because now there was reliable water. People could live there. Companies could establish themselves. Life became viable. Industry also benefited. Factories that needed water for production processes could set up in the south. This created jobs, stimulated the local economy, reduced dependence on imports. The cascading impact was immense. Each liter of water that flowed through the national water carrier generated economic opportunities that multiplied. Here's a surprising fact. Economists estimate that the economic return on investment in the national water carrier was approximately 10 to 1. For every dollar invested, 
the Israeli economy gained 10. Few infrastructure projects in the world can claim this type of return. But let's talk about the social impact, because this is where the story really touches the heart. Before the national water carrier, there was a clear division in Israel. The North was developed, had resources, opportunities. The South was forgotten, neglected. People who lived there faced daily difficulties. Water was scarce. Opportunities were rare. Many considered moving to the North. The national water carrier changed this dynamic completely. Suddenly the South became attractive. Not just viable, but desirable. The government offered incentives for people to move there. And now with guaranteed water, people accept it. Kibbutzim, Israel's collective agricultural communities, spread across the desert. Young families settled. Children grew up in regions their parents would never have considered inhabiting. Quality of life improved drastically. Access to clean and reliable water meant better health. Fewer waterborne diseases. Better sanitary conditions. Infant mortality rates fell. Life expectancy increased. These were tangible improvements that touched every family. And there's more. The project created a sense of national pride. Israelis looked at the national water carrier and saw what was possible. They saw that their small country could achieve incredible feats. That challenges that seemed impossible could be overcome with ingenuity, determination and hard work. This strengthened national identity. It created a narrative of success that would inspire generations. Are you ready to understand what Israel really built? It wasn't just a water system. It was a declaration. A declaration that limits are just challenges waiting to be overcome. That geography is not destiny. That with enough ingenuity you can literally change the landscape of a nation. Israel's artificial river isn't just water flowing through pipelines. It's hope flowing through a nation. It's possibility transforming deserts into gardens. It's the future being built, one liter at a time. And this story is far from over, because every day, billions of liters of water flow through this system, feeding farms, sustaining cities, keeping alive a nation built against all odds. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. If you enjoyed this incredible story of engineering and human determination, leave your like on this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next documentaries about the world's most impressive mega projects. See you in the next video.